And welcome to the late recording of the risk working group. Um, We've been going for a while and we forgot to record. Yeah. Sean, <laughs> Sean forgot, even though he went through the trouble of logging in as the chaos user to do so. So we're going to focus on defect resolution time as a, as a new metric. And can I, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why defect versus bug. Um, I, I, I have no religion. I don't know. I don't have religion about the term. Do we want to call it bug resolution time? All of these metrics are more formal, so I would say call it defect, because uh, I think some people, you know, there are formal definitions of defect, and I think bug is just an informal name for the same thing. Well, I'm also thinking about it in the context of risk, where the defect for me is more specific to something that doesn't work, whereas a bug could also be something more insidious, like a security vulnerability like I like or could lead to that so I'm just kind of in the I don't I, it, presuming it's unintentional I wouldn't perceive a difference now you could argue that if it's a malicious code intentionally put in it's not a defect but it's also not a bug <laughs> Dwayne what do you call what do you call them at uh, indeed is Dwayne still here or did he drop oh I'm still no I, I'm still here um we probably call them, gosh, we probably call them bugs. Um, uh, when I, when I, I was just, I was checking for reference for what we have in the metrics tracking sheet, um, which has bugs in at least three fields. And then you called my name. I didn't get a chance to search for defects, but, um, okay. and this may be the there conversation is, is... You, you all were having at the beginning, but um, uh, defect versus bug versus issue are uh versus feature on github are all the same unless they're labeled right right well Git, github is issues are just the way of tracking comments of some kind some right. are feature requests some are defects um let's see here ieee 1044 2009 ieee standard classification for software anomalies and <laughs> immediately i find the word defects so the, the thing I want to avoid, David, is like you and I are both software engineering nerds and we know the quantitative meaning of defect and the IEEE rules like I teach software engineering and that's the word I use. But mm -hmm. I think colloquially the word in, in practice, people who are not as big of software engineering nerds as we are, pro it seems like they might use bug and recognize that term more which is why I kind of asked Dwayne what he thought. And I don't know, I would guess, Kate, you are also yeah. nerdy and use defect. Well, I, I also think it's probably a good idea for us to standardize on defect because okay. people do understand that bugs are defects. And also that will give us a bridge into the software engineering discipline as well as a lot of the safety engineering. I was also thinking defect will translate better. Um, we assume mm -hmm. that other people in other parts of the world use the word bug, but I live in the US and recognize my own limitations on that knowledge. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I, bugs I, may I, be I, protein but, somewhere. Yeah. For, further in the new template, we have this option of synonyms where we can report bugs, issues, like the uh, defect is also known as bugs and other things. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I, I'd be careful. Don't, issue is not a synonym, but bug uh, and, and defect yeah. is a synonym. Yeah. Um, well, at least I, at least in, in, I think of them as synonyms, whether or not other people think of them as a synonyms. But mm -hmm. I would prefer defect just because as soon as you enter the world of, of uh, formal stuff and you start yeah. talking to other engineers, uh, they don't call these bugs. Mm -hmm. So we, if you start talking to hardware engineers, particularly outside of computing, uh, you know, material science person knows all about defects. Uh, they don't know what a bug is. Mm -hmm. I, I do consider, though, that an issue is a synonym, potentially, um, as well for a defect, just because it's become so pervasive. I, I don't think so. Uh, and I think GitHub is absolutely responsible for making those two words different. Most issues aren't defects. Most issues are feature requests. And some of them are customer support requests. 
I, not in not attempting to boil the ocean in this discussion, but I, the thing, the one of the most heated arguments I've had with somebody on GitHub was whether my software not doing the thing they wanted it to do was a bug or not. And yeah. my, my strong my strong assertion was I never intended for it to do that, so it's not a bug. It's right. a missing feature. And they said, that's a bug. And I said, I strongly disagree. <laughs> you, you know what? The project gets to decide their scope. Uh, this yeah, is, this is like we, it. This is how we resolved it. I said, this is my project. And so I'm saying that what you're asking for is a new feature, which I do not want to build. And so, yep. Uh, but okay. to, to your point, though, I think a lot of issues are um, often tracked as feature requests. Uh, I, um, sure. I added that undocumented feature is a synonym for defect, just um, in, in a joking manner here. <laughs> <laughs> Just to just be provocative. Okay, very good. Yeah, I was trying to see if anybody's paying attention to what's being typed on the yeah. screen. Um, yeah. But by the way, I will note that I have worked in in house as well as proprietary. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, hey, it doesn't do what I want it to do, therefore it's a bug, uh, is not limited to the open source software world. No. <laughs> right, right, of course. Yeah. So, so often what we'll do in a working group when we start to create a new metric is we'll maybe pause the recording and actually collaboratively edit some draft of this into place. Uh, folks up for that? John, uh, I don't have added access to the document. I don't really? know whether others have I, um, added. I swear. I... Yeah. Any, oh, oh, wait a minute. I messed up. But yeah, you know, yeah, we, I mean, editor, yep. sorry. Yeah, eventually, yeah, we, we may want to change that, but I got it for now. <laughs> <laughs> that That is, uh, that is, that's, um, thanks for pointing that out, Vinod, because that was just a failure on my part. I think the link is probably the same, but just in case it isn't, I will update. Way too many tabs open. I don't want to distract the writers, but I think Dwayne has raised a good point in the chat that we should be specific to software defects versus other issues that could exhibit a, a defectual end case. But whether or not it's part rooted in the software versus how you set it up or the processes and integrations you set around it. So would a better name for the metric be software defect resolution time? I don't think we have to I don't think we have to name that. Just be more specific about that. The measurement only is gonna to apply to that because I I don't know, because it then it it becomes a little bit too broad because then the if the defect is how you set it up versus the thing itself, then that isn't really the project's fault, unless the project had incorrect documentation, in which case that's an issue, not a defect. Uh, so just, okay, now I'm, I'm following more closely now. It's, it's distinguishing between a software defect and a defect introduced by a deployment mistake, essentially. Yeah. I mean, maybe we don't maybe we're getting too in the weeds but no i mean i don't i don't think so like when when i get deployment defect notices regarding auger generally they're my fault um but i think i think in other in other there are many other cases where um people just don't actually read the the instructions uh or they misalign and don't install a library so I think that that's a useful distinction. I like in my head, it's like user error versus software error. Like this right. morning, I put in the wrong role and so nothing ran. So that was completely my error.
What's the difference between working correctly or as specified? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, perhaps it just, I mean, correctly, I suppose felt more weaselly um, and as specified sounded less weaselly. In some cases, there might be formal specifications like use cases or requirements documents. And working correctly, I see that as the person creating the defect. That's their perception of how it should work. And that gets to the Arfon story where it wasn't a defect. It was, <laughs> it's just exactly what he meant to do. <laughs> having flashbacks. Yeah, sorry. Um, Vinod, this, this disclaimer regarding privacy risks is something we just leave as is, correct? Or Sophia, maybe you recall from our dis I know you've been part of those discussions. Do we just we leave this for now? Even is that right? Yeah, we, we leave it for now. Um, okay. And we'll review it to make sure that it still doesn't seem like there are any issues or conflicts. Um, something that we haven't standardized yet in this approach, I guess, for those that are in the weekly calls, we've been trying to come up with a general statement to encourage people to notice when the data collection required to generate the metric could be potentially putting them into any conflict with legal policy or um, regulatory policies. So we have a general disclaimer now, um, given that a lot of these data, uh, the data required to collect a lot of these things, um, I'm not speaking correctly, sorry, the data required to produce these metrics could inquire say, the generation of a lot of PII and additional data about people. Uh, in which case that you are in sort of GDPR land. Um, so we have a general disclaimer now that we're sticking into metrics and we're working on a central piece of documentation that will provide a little bit more suggested guidance without being overly prescriptive because clearly we are not lawyers. We are varying different types of roles. I don't think we have any lawyers in the chaos community actually. Um, but We certainly we, have lawyers at Linux Foundation who'd help, help us organize legally. <laughs> Yeah, and we're actually referencing a couple of LF docs um, that have come up already in terms of like how to deal with export controls um, or GDPR within the construct of your community. So we're trying to, again, again, try to generate a list of resources available and just encouraging folks to have responsible and ethical metrics practices. Okay, I have I have uh, proposed in the description a just this more specific metric and some notes, and we can argue about it. <laughs> you ready for arguing? Is uh, this is right up here, David? The, this description the definition, right? So I am proposing that when we say what's the defect resolution time, uh, this is this is basically. I mean. This, uh, to, for our new folks, this is kind of the rubber meets the road. The, the challenge for this group is narrowing down exactly what you mean by some metric. So I'm proposing that be, be the time between the formal report of a defect to the project. So, you know, you know, if, if a project normally takes bug report, reports as a as an GitHub issue, whining about something in a Slack channel that may not even be associated with a project doesn't count. It's got to be the actual reporting mechanism, you know, be, you know, maybe formal is the wrong term. Uh, the report of a defect to the project using its um, using the project using the project's 
defect reporting mechanism. Okay, and the time where the project accepts or merges something that repairs that defect and makes it available to the public. You'll notice I'm carefully not defining the end time as when the pro software is released. There are some projects which don't, you know, you know, their releases may only happen, say, every other year. And, and I think that would be way too um, coarse grained. So you know, what, once the merge of a defect's been accepted and merged in, I think we should accept that as a perfectly, you know, as the end time, I, uh, as long as it's available to the public, because if only two people care about the defect fix, they can get that version. I don't know how other people feel, but I think you, from my perspective, David, you'll be saddened to learn I don't have any objection to that definition. Oh my goodness. Maybe the public is the wrong term uh, to its users. If we want to allow uh, proprietary folks. Although these are open source metrics, so I'd be happy with either. <laughs> yeah, I, I, what I, I do think it's useful to, to divorce or separate. It's fixed and it's been released and maybe released is the word you're looking for here at the end. That's right. Um, That's right. What we, we want it to be fixed, not the release time, because right. that I think is too way way too coarse grained. And really, for most custom most users, once it's fixed and you know it's going to be in the next version, most defects it's okay. You can live with it for a little while, and if you're unhappy, you can wind the project to hurry up their release faster. So is, is this the distinction perhaps between the nightly build of Firefox and the official release of Firefox as an example? Exactly. I would okay. actually go further. As soon as you merge it into their main branch, you're done as far as this is concerned. Which is now their nightly, nightly build. Release. Your nightly build happens hours later. So there's not really much difference. Well, now, by the way, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. But, but an important question here would be to, to understand if it's standard practice or we it's it's standard enough practice that the issues are closed when they're merged not when it's released um i think that's pr right. probably true that feels true-ish to me but i don't know if it's actually true well uh, i actually yeah. don't think we care uh, about their close time except that that's how we're getting the data what we care about uh, is the merge time i don't i don't think we can ever speak for all open source projects but uh, most all of the ones that I've worked on and I'm aware of, when you merge a pull request into the main branch that resolves an issue, the issue is closed. Yeah, as long as the, somebody thought to include the link <laughs> between the two. Yeah, you know, fixes right. Fixes number yeah. blah on GitHub. But but right. yes, I, I mean it is. I, I think for the for most projects that I'm familiar with, um, if they have an issue tracker at all. If they don't, that's a different problem. Uh, then you really want to close off those things because otherwise it gets completely overwhelming. All right. So uh, let's let's David, let's get really, really precise here. I know you love that bit. Um, I don't as, I don't I don't, but I know it's necessary. <laughs> as, as written, um, to the time that the project merges something that repairs the defect. How do we know that the merge has repaired the defect if the issue hasn't been closed? I think that's a good point. That's a fair point. But like there's no I, way there's no way to link any pull request to an issue if it's not if they're not linked. If the issue remains open, as far as we know, the the defect the remains in the software. Right. In, in, in think, cases, at least in cases in GitHub where where they're where they've tagged it and it automatically closes it when the merge lands, right? Those are the same time, but if they haven't, there's going to be some amount of time that elapses between a merge that fixes the issue and then verification of the issue actually being closed. So I, I'd say that we actually are pinned to the issue was closed. That's the only predictable flag that we have that, that says it's been fixed. Actually, that's I not think. true, because um, in some systems, yeah, this, this is the this is the joy of trying to nail down these definitions. We've, uh, um, you can close it later and add it later. Hey, this was fixed by. I've seen that, and in that case, a tool can look at that and figure out, oh, it should have been closed last year, and here's the evidence for it. 
if you don't have any evidence for it, then the time it was closed is the right answer. I think in, in terms of easy to, I mean, I, I, think what we, if, I would say if a defect's identified by an issue, then the closing of the issue is the only signal that we have that the defect is resolved. Um, like it may be resolved by the merge request, but there's no signal to the world that that happened until the issue is closed. I do know of projects though that have some auto close tooling for things that are open for a length of time, which doesn't actually mean that close always corresponds to the issue being addressed. Right. Oh. In, in, in fact, uh, I, I think that kind of uh, leprous, uh, uh, nasty approach is becoming more and more common. You know, hey, you reported it last year. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I, you know, only new things are true and something that's a year old is obviously not true. What? So does, does <laughs> so, I mean, this, this raises a question though, if, because we're going to have to develop a metric that we can actually measure. Right. If we're hard about the heuristic where the issue has to be tied to some code change to, to close the defect, we're going to have defects that are never closed, even if Correct. the issue's closed. And on the other hand, so that's, if I'm looking at the rock curve here, that would be, uh, that'd be a false negative. If I, if I fix the issue, but don't close the issue. And if I close, if I close the issue without doing anything, then that's a false positive that the defect is fixed. Well, I mean, the, the side argument here is it's kind of up to the implementer how they designate these things too, because we're also going to put in the description of implementation that it really depends on what, what you're doing in your project and the conventions that you've outlined. Um, and within that, then you would design your measurement to correspond to whatever policies or automated actions are being taken. So you wouldn't, hopefully that wouldn't be an issue for you, I guess. Um, it's just, I guess I just want to make sure within our own language that we're not conflating anything that we don't need to. Yeah, you know what, um, I, I, Sean, I agree with your concern. Um, I think that it would be too complicated to try to put all that within this metric. I think that suggests the need for a different metric, something like abandoned bug or defects or, um, you know. So what is the, what is the, what is this metric saying then? I don't disagree there could be a different metric, but. What, which, how is, is this metric defining um, the release of software? Does the release of software have to close the defect? Or the issue I, that I, identifies okay, release. the defect? C careful, you don't mean a release oh, as does in the, my does the, official version 1.0. Does the merging of a pull request have to close the issue? Or can the issue be closed without being associated with a pull request? And do we count that? I think it needs to be associated with some actual change of the code or there's, or frankly, I would assume that they didn't fix it. They just don't want to do it. And if, so, okay. So, okay. so I, I, I think okay that would that. not be included in this measure because we're measuring the time of the report of a defect to the time where it got fixed. So would this be right for a defect to be considered resolved? The closing of the associated issue must be linked to a merged change request um, or other code change could be a direct commit. Is, is that what we're saying? Well, I wouldn't say code, but some change. Okay. What would be, the, I'm just curious, what would be the change other than code that would fix a defect? Could change the process. Um, what process? Uh, like the business? Process. Well, okay. I'm thinking, you know, it, well, in fact, uh, you know, hey, your process for compiling the code is, is a bug is wrong no. okay okay you get like if i'm doing a safety okay so for example if i'm using a, a building safety critical software and i'm not 
tightly bounding all that. That's a process problem. Yeah, or your your compiler flags don't work on my CPU. Oh, we but that's a supported CPU. We screwed up. Um, okay. Now, to be fair, I would accept that build scripts are code too. So maybe you could just change that. Say that's all code anyway. So. You know, I, I would say uh, co code including build instructions. Yeah, you can you can change that however you want. We're about out of time for this meeting, so I. All right. How how got... can we get the uh, the badge uh, uh, metric renamed? I, I don't badge. know the process. Oh, yeah, the CI to that's... open SSF. I, I don't know where I file that issue. Um, I. I mean, uh, Sean, in the, yeah, in the next release notes, we can add this and we can modify it and create an okay. issue in the risk work. I can uh, take care of that. So. Oh, okay. All right. You'll take care of that. Then that's great. Yeah. And... Uh, if the what is the correct label? Ha has that been mentioned in the just just, uh, like, just change notes? just change CII to open SSF. That's it. It just got a minor rename. That's all. Okay. Because okay. CII doesn't technically exist anymore, and it okay. got moved over to Open SSF, so that's all. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. And so, um, thank you for taking care of that, Vinod. I think uh, when we meet again in two weeks, we can finish this metric um, and incorporate um, some. You know, if we want to specify example labels or whatever, um, I do have a couple of um, large spreadsheets that apparently Google won't open right now that in our addition to the old ones. So um, I'll make those available once I figure out how to get Google to open a very large spreadsheet. Um, I'm really surprised it wouldn't, honestly, because it opened the last one. So it's probably a user error. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.